Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and I hope you're all doing good. If I'm not wrong, many Honda fanboys have an urge to own a Civic Type R, right? This car is a front wheel drive car, which means the front axle is a live axle. Front axles are of two types, live axle and dead axle, depending upon the power transmission to the wheels. If you're a regular follower of our channel, you might have come across a couple of videos on the rear axle. In those videos, we have explained about live and dead axles. If you've missed it, then the links are in the description below. Now, front axles have various functions. Let's list them down. First, it takes the weight of the front portion of the vehicle. The front axle also gives steering facility and provides a cushioning effect with the help of suspension system and absorbs the shock. In case of a four-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive, power is transmitted to the front wheel. Now, let's see the construction and components of the front axle with the help of a figure. The major part of the front axle is the axle beam. From the figure, we can see that the ends of the axle are shaped in such a way that the stub axle can be assembled. The wheels are connected to the stub axles. In one of our upcoming videos, we'll be talking exclusively about the stub axle. So stay tuned. Next is the steering arm. There are three steering arms out of which two are connected to the track rod and third one is connected to the drag link. With the help of a drop arm, the steering column is connected to the drag link. Now, the stub axles are connected to the kingpins so that they help in steering function. Now, let's continue the video by explaining about the components briefly. First up is the axle beam. The axle beam is manufactured by drop forging of steel. It contains 0.4% of carbon or 1-3% to of nickel steel. The center portion of the axle is formed into an I section. This I section carries the bending load caused by the load of the vehicle and the torque acting during acceleration and braking. Also, to maintain the chassis height low, a downward sweep is provided. The ends of the axle beam are shaped either as a yoke or plain surface drilled with holes to hold the kingpin, connecting the stub axle and the ends of the axle beam. On the axle beam, springs known as spring pads or spring seats are mounted equidistant from the axle center. These springs reduce the swing or sway of the vehicle while turning. The next component is the kingpin. In order to permit the wheels to steer, the steering assembly is connected to the axle beam with the help of a pin. This pin is known as the kingpin or steering knuckle pin. It's also called as the swivel pin. This pin is made of good quality case hardened steel and is locked in its position with the help of cotter pins. The third one is the track rod. Both the stub axle arms at the end are connected with the help of a knuckle or a ball and socket to the track rod. The toe in and toe out setup are done by adjusting the track rod's length with the help of threads present on them. If you're unfamiliar with the term toe, then we have a separate video on that as well. Do check it out, we've dropped the link in the description below. The last one is the pull and push rod or drag link. This connects both the stub axle and steering drop arm. It has a tubular cross section. Now that's it about the components. Now let's look at the types of front axle before we conclude this video. Based on the axle beam, front axles are of three types. They are straight axle, double drop axle and fully dropped axle. We'll be discussing them in detail in another video. So that's it for this video and I hope to see you again in the next one. Until then, Bye.